Kev, welcome back. I think a lot of people have been really excited to see you back in the UFC and, and back here with this organization. How does it feel to, to be a part of the UFC again? Yeah, I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to test my skills, come out here and uh, perform against the, the best of the world. That's, that's the only thing that I'm interested in. I, I love this sport, and that was the, the ultimate deciding factor in me coming back. I didn't want to turn it to boxing where the best guys are, aren't all in one place. And uh, for me to prove that, I need to prove I'm one of the best guys, and taking on a young, uh, up-and-coming dude is going to do that. And you, you know, two years, but only one fight outside of the organization. So does this feel like weird at all to be back? Or does it just feel like right where you were when you, when you walked away? A, a little bit. I, I feel like it's been about three years since I've really performed at, at, at the right level and really had the right fight. Um, so for three years, it, it's been me rebuilding myself, re, me rebuilding my strength, everything to get back to that level. Uh, the, the fans really haven't seen me since I fought Charles Oliveira, and, and they're going to see a different version of me in, in this fight, uh, a bigger, stronger, more mature, faster version, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to show that. I, I've been in the dark for these, these three years, so now I get to come to the light. I love it. What would you say the biggest change would be? Would it be the physical aspect of things, or would it be maybe the mental aspect of things, which is a big part of this game as well? Yeah, I think it's the mental aspect. Um, I've always been pretty fast, pretty strong, a able to hold my own against anybody. But mentally, I, I feel more clear. I feel more clarity. I feel more, more put together. So I, I think you're going to see a, a much more experienced me. I think that's what's really going to show through in this fight. Uh, he hasn't fought anybody at this level. I, I, I might not have fought for a while, but I've got 18 fights in the UFC against former world champions, against current world champions, against, against a lot of different dudes. So um, I think me relying on experience and being a, a, a strong, still athletic guy is going to shine through. You said you came here because you want to fight the best. I thought this matchup was interesting, right? Because it's a very tough guy, but certainly yeah. a guy that doesn't have the name recognition that you do. Yeah. So what were your thoughts when that was the name that was given to you? Did it excite you or did it frustrate you because it's not that name recognition that maybe you're used to? No, nah, it, it excited me because it, it gave me more pressure. I, I'm somebody, I, I kind of like the pressure. And... For me to go up against somebody that nobody heard of, that I really didn't even hear of, I just learned how to pronounce his name this weekend. So it's, it's like I got to really go for it. I got to really step it up. You can't, you can't play around with this dude and, and, and even show that he's in the same category as me. Um, so that puts a lot of pressure on me. But he's strong. He, he, he's talented. Uh, I think he's like on a 19-fight win streak or something crazy like that. And he might not have the name recognition. He might not be able to speak English. He might not, the, the fans might not know who he is. But when I look at his skill set, it's very similar to like a, a Kamzat Chemaev, almost junior, you know. Um, you look at his fights, he doesn't get hit a lot. Uh, but I don't think he's ever fought anybody at this level. And, and I'm going to show I'm, I'm, I'm the next level. You talked about kind of being in the dark the last couple of years. I'm curious, this phase of your career, right? Yeah. You were thrust into the spotlight very early on. Tab is like, all oh, the pressure on you. He's yeah. the next big thing. Do you want to get back to that where, like, all the attention's on you? Or would you rather just kind of quietly go about your business? I honestly don't care too much about the attention no more. You know, I, I had that. I, I, I seen what it was like. I don't really care too much about it. It's, it's the, the fans are, are – I'm not even going to say the fans. I'm just going to say people in general are very – it's, it's, it's a messed up world that we kind of live in. You know, if, if I'm sitting up here and I got 10 million followers, you, you listen to my words a little different than if I got 100. Um, to me, that don't make, it, it doesn't make a difference. I, I, I like what you really do. If, if I really mess with somebody, I really mess with them because of who they are and what they do. Uh, it's not necessarily about how many people or how much attention they get or, or, or anything like that. It's, it's about what's inside of them and what's in their heart. And, and that's how I feel. I, th this thing is in me. It's, it's not on me. It's not somebody didn't give it to me. I know who I am. I don't have to, to prove to anybody anymore. Um, my, my brother's reaching a new, new level of fame even outside of M MMA. And, and that's kind of giving me, like, the battery in my back to really know what I what – I, I always known it, but it's kind of good to have that confirmation from the outside. Um, and I know if I, if I get out there, I, I, I can be a superstar anywhere I go, in any in industry. And I've thought about that in the last year or so. But fighting is just in me. It's in my heart. I, I got unproved and unfinished business over here that I got to get to. So um, I don't care too much about stepping into the spotlight. I don't care too much about – the, the media attention. I don't care too much about the fans. I, I appreciate everybody that supports me. Don't get me wrong. Let me be clear. 
I appreciate everybody that support me and show me love, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's about something bigger than that. I, I got a son now, and, and I want him to be my biggest fan. And for him to do that, I got to be my biggest fan. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. That's awesome. Well said. Last thing for me, what does success look like to you in this bout right here? I mean, is it just about, you know, is it about getting a result? Is it about getting a performance? Is it about feeling a certain way in there that maybe you, you haven't felt lately? Like, what does success mean to you in this fight? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be feeling like the old me. I feel like I gave the, 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 my last fight was, my last fight was bullshit. Like, I, I'll say it straight up. Um, coming off knee surgeries and all that stuff, and I, I just rushed into it. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the real me, so I, I would like to get back to that and show my my real potential and not just go out as somebody like, oh, he had potential. Like, I, I got to prove to myself that I can meet those standards that I've set uh, even at a young age. So it's going to be about first and foremost getting a W by any means necessary, even if it's a boring fight, even if it's a drag him out fight. This dude is is, is serious. He's, he's strong. He's... Uh, got a good chin, he can take a lot of damage. I'm gonna to have to really put it on him for, for me to really see success and that's, that, that's what it's about. It's about getting the W and then looking good afterwards. Hey Kevin, over here. Mm -hmm. um, I just have one for you. I know that you shared the mats with Chris Lencioni and he's going through um, a medical, really serious medical issue. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. No. Um, he may not, he's coming out of a coma it seems like right now. He's uh, very serious. I'm just wondering if you have any words of encouragement um, thoughts about that? I, I honestly didn't know that until you just said it. Um, but but it's heavy, you know. I, I I wish him the best. I wish his family the best. I I wish the best for anybody, um, especially when it comes down to health. I, I think that's uh, first and foremost, e even over fighting or or anything else that he's got going on. Um, we got a big team over at Kill Cliff FC, so um, yeah, we, we're all behind him. Thank you. Kevin, obviously, as John was saying, this guy is very tough, but his name value is not necessarily the highest. Do you want to win this fight, remind everyone that you're one of the best in the world, and then sort of move on to those bigger names in the division? Yeah, it's not so much about the bigger names. You know, I, I think that comes with it, but it's going to be about the more competition. You know, he, he, as good as his skills are, he hasn't really had that level of, of experience yet. So, um, I would like to fight somebody who, who's got a lot more experience in the game, and especially at 170. I've only got two or three fights at 170, and, and even though I train all the time with, with these top-level, top-elite 170 guys, when you get out, get out there and you compete against these guys, it, it makes a big difference. So um, that, that's kind of what I'm excited to do. I, I want to test myself against the best in the world. And uh, guys like Leon Edwards, they, they present, like, particular um, – challenges that you have to meet so I, I would like to to get up there and meet that is 170 your home for the rest of your career you think yeah yeah 170 for sure um I'm a big guy I'm I'm, I'm filling out my frame I'm, I'm strong uh people are going to see on Saturday that I'm a full-fledged 170 it, it'll come a point where it'll be like Dustin Poirier where people kind of forget that he was even a, a, a featherweight um Sean Strickland where people even forget that he was a welterweight uh I, I'll be a full-fledged 170 from now Last one for me, John sort of mentioned, you know, you've been at the top level from a very young age, and I feel like that comes with criticisms that people don't really understand. You know, you're a young guy, you're in the spotlight, yeah. you're trying to boost your career, and I don't think people really kind of understand how, you know, a young man can be affected by the outside. Since you've had like a few years away from the spotlight, sort of, do you think people need to be more aware of younger fighters are going to make mistakes and, and sort of put their foot wrong, and they're growing up in the public eye, and people don't really appreciate that with their criticisms? Yeah, I think I, I think everybody kind of sets expectations for for other people, um, not necessarily knowing the the circumstances of of what's going on or or where their minds at or or how they grew up. Um, a, a, as a young kid, really from the slums, you you don't really know how to deal with success. You don't know how to deal with attention. You don't know how to deal with with the eyeballs. Um, and, and the only way to deal with it is through experience and time. And I've kind of given myself that, and it's, it's, it's hard to say because I feel like people should just judge you off your performance, but I had a bad performance the last time. Um, and kind of let people just live their lives and, and experience the life that they need as, as long as they're, they're good people, and if they, they are, then support them. If they're not, then fuck them.
Kevin, over here. Um, there have been many questions and comments about your UFC return, but I guess the biggest question is, where does Kevin Lee fit into this current UFC welterweight division? I, I think you're going to see that after, after Saturday. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm taking on a young, tough guy who, who's trying to make a name for himself, and, and I'm going to turn him back, and, and I'm going to take all his shine. He's on a 19-fight win streak. Uh, I'm 2-2 two and two in my last four, but I'm right there with, with the best of the world. So... They're going to see that after this fight, you know. This, the guy who's fighting for the title right now, you talk about Kobe Covington, he's 2-2 two and two in his last four. He's fighting for the title. So with this win, I, I think it'll show that I'm ready for, for the top ten and I'm ready to uh, get back up there. And uh, for your, is there any part of you that wishes that this fight was like in a sold-out arena or does it not matter to you? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, I wish it was. I, I'm kind of... Yeah, I, I wish it was uh, in front of more fans. You know, I don't know how many people are going to be at Apex, but it's kind of stupid. I don't know what we're doing. You know <laughs> what I mean? The pandemic over. I don't know if people got the message or, you know, if they if they sent out the telegram, but the pandemic is over. I don't know what we're still doing here. I, I get that it's money to be had, but it's, it's kind of stupid. It's a, it's a different energy when it's when it's thousands and thousands of people screaming. It's a different, it's a different level of feeling. Um, it's, it's why when I, when I want fights like, like the Charles Oliveira fight again, it's, it's, it's a different feeling, you know? I, I, I wish that was happening, but I'm, I'm going to make do with what I do, and I'm, I'm going to go out there on Saturday in front of the two, 300 rich-ass motherfuckers <laughs> that want to see me bleed, and uh, we're going to get it in. Awesome. And... Um there was rumors about you fighting Tony. Not sure if they were how true they were, but there were some yeah. rumors about that. Um, now that it didn't go through, is that something you still want after this fight, or not anymore? Yeah, I wanted to make that fight happen, but Tony, uh, he, he's got other plans. He's staying at 55. He's 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 doing his own thing. He's uh, in some legal trouble and all that stuff right now. So I, I wish him the best. Um, yeah, I, I wanted that fight. I thought the fight was going to happen, but. You know, he, he decided to stay at 155, so b best of luck to him. And uh, last one for me, with a win over Renat this weekend, is there a specific name you want in that top 10, 15 guys, or does it not matter to you what's next? Honestly, it doesn't matter. There, there, there's so many guys at 170. Um, yeah, there, there's nobody that comes to mind. My, my, my full focus is on him, not right now. I'm not even thinking next week. I'm not thinking two weeks from now. I'm not thinking none of that. It's, it, it's all on Saturday night and, and taking this guy really, really serious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kevin. How surprised were you that your brother just became so, so popular and so famous? Like, obviously, you've lived with, you, you've known him your entire life. So, yeah. like, did you know this personality? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, that's why it's, I'm not surprised at all. When you say surprised, no. I, I, I told him years ago, before he even started fighting, before he was dipping his toes into fighting, that, that he was going to be bigger than me. Um, that's what I wanted from the beginning for him. And I didn't necessarily know how it was going to come about. I never saw this route kind of kind of being the route. Um, and I still think he's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and I hope he's 10 times bigger than me. Um, so it, it, it makes me very proud to, to see him do his, do his thing. And, you know, he's going to be in my corner on Saturday, and we're we going to have another big victory. Has he shared some of his Chipotle with you? <laughs> nah, 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 not yet. I mean, I ate a lot of this stuff, but you know, nah. I'm, we we on two different, we on two different, two different life paths right now. So, uh, fighting is in my heart. Fighting is where it's at. When I was thinking about resigning back with the UFC, I'm like, man, I could go to any one of these industries, any one of these big ass Facebook and 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 you know, um, Instagrams and all this stuff and and get a shit ton of money not to do half of what I got to do to, to step out here. But I don't know. It's just something in my heart that, that is willing to, to take the pay cut, kind of, you know, um, feel a little used and abused and, and go out there and abuse somebody else. And finally, I just wanted to ask about Killcliffe, man. Uh, you've been yep. to, you've trained at many high level gyms under many high level coaches. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between Killcliffe with all those bodies now under Henry Huff? Like just talk about that. Yeah, it's 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 the team, you know. It's 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 like a it's like a wolf pack, and and you got to stand out in order to 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 stand out over there. You can't just, you know, there there's no special people, there's no special attention given. You you have to put in the work on the mats. 
um, which is one of the things that I love about the sport. It's, it's so raw. It's not you can't just step in there and just talk a bunch of shit and then all of a sudden you're you're the guy. You're the it guy. No, you got to go out there and you got to step in there. Step in there with this guy. Step in this, there with this guy. Step in there with Jason Jackson. Step in there with with Kamaru Usman. Go in there with Ian Gary. Go in there with some of these top guys. Um, and it, it's really kind of. It elevates you, you know. They say iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel, all that stuff for a reason. It's, it's definitely true. So compared to, to other gyms out there, um, there's great trainers. Faraz Ahabi is one of the best trainers in the world. Dewey Cooper is one of the best trainers in the world. Um, but that, that, that team aspect and those training partners and those bodies over at Kill Cliff is, is unmatched. Is it nice having so many bodies? And it was, is that, was that something you were lacking yeah. early, early in your career? Um, no, I'm not going to say I'm lack I was lacking it because, you know, there's a lot of guys that you never hear of that are very, very good in the gym, very good in the gym. Um, so I, I'm not going to say it was lacking. It, it's just when you got 10 different guys that are all at the UFC welterweight level and all fighting in the UFC right now, um, you get adjusted to that, to that, that size, you get adjusted to that movement, you get adjusted to the experience of these guys um, a, a lot easier than you do from some up and coming guy that, that is very talented, but he doesn't have the same level of experience of being in there. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to say it was lacking, but it, it definitely helps. That's for sure. Who were some of your main training partners for this camp? Yeah, I, I used a lot of Russian fighters. Um, obviously, I'm getting ready to fight a Russian guy. Um, I don't want to say too, you know, too, too many names, to be honest with you, because I, I know I'm going to leave somebody out. But uh, a, a lot of Russian fighters, like I said, it's, it's, it's over 100 guys at, at Kill Cliff. So you, you kind of got the, the pick of the litter, which is nice. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. All good? Perfect. All good. All right. All right. Thank you. all See you all Saturday.